This is not going to be a detailed report, but hopefully it's going to cover enough information to make it interesting. This is one of a series of games we've played and will continue to play. They're run by uh, two club members who should both remain nameless. There's nothing particularly unusual about the gameplay itself. Standard set of rules, in this case Flames of War, are played in 15mm. Where it does differ from most of our other games is in the amount of figures we use. The two nameless ones love to get as much on the table as they possibly can. This is nothing new. In the past, they have been responsible for a few other games. A World War I game, a Cruel Seas game, a colonial game, an insurgency game featuring partisans, paratroopers and marines titled The Night Before D-Day, and now this two-part Vietnam game. Part two of this game will be based on the idea that the Viet Cong fall back from this position after being overrun by the Americans, and it is designed to be a large tank engagement. Now, from watching this video, I will leave it to your creative minds to imagine just how large large will actually be. According to the cowardly members, sorry, 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 club members on the other side, did I say cowardly? Sorry about that. There were evidently 80 helicopters. I did shoot a few down, and from these images you can probably see that there were quite a few, so all in all I'd guess there was 80. Did we get 80 on the table all at once? I don't think anyone bothered counting, but there were enough. just like to add here before we carry on for anyone who feels that we don't take the, the hobby serious we do a lot of our games are quite involved and quite serious and even games like this where we have quite a lot of toys on the table we do play or do adhere quite strictly to the rules and you can always tell when you're sticking to the rules that there are a few um Disagreements, shall we say. Anyway, back to the video. I guess here would be a good place to give you some idea of the scenario we played. I don't think it was based on anything that actually happened. It may well have been, and they may well have told me, but if you met them, you wouldn't bother listening either. So let's just take you through what it is. The rule set we used is Flames of War. Um, it's slightly more, a slightly more complex set of rules, for want of a better word, uh, than what we will usually use in a large game like this. Normally we would go for something like Bolt Action, or as previously mentioned, Cruel Seas, which are great games. It's just that the, um, they're a lot less complex to play through, and when you've got a large amount of figures or in Cruel Seas case ships to move about um, you want something that's really quite quick and snappy. The map you can now see are the starting positions. The Americans were given four zones. Three they had to approach with a landing craft that would be one two and three. The fourth zone at the far end was more of a diversionary attack. The idea was to occupy the forces in that region, the forces defending the town and what was the VC command on the hill at the far end. While 
the landing zones one, two and three swept up the table to take the bridge. The VC positions, or my position, one of them anyway, um, you can see defined by the helmets there. We also had or held two villages. Now we had the option whether or not to defend those. I chose not to, um, simply because the overwhelming firepower would have just run over me straight away. There would have been any point. You'd have just reduced the amount of forces you had to bring into play without being able to put up much of a fight, really. So I made the decision not to hold the villages and fall back to a different defensive position a little further inland. This game was always intended to be in two parts. This, this part and the aforementioned tank engagement that we will play later on. So it, it was never our intention to hold the Americans and counter-attack from these positions. It was always a case of delaying them and then falling back to our next position. The overwhelming firepower that the Americans could bring to bear was just impossible to stop. As I said, one of the reasons we didn't defend the two villages was because of this. Um, and once they started to bring up their armour, it was just a question of time before we had to disengage. Their M48s and Sheridans made light work of our T-34s, the 85s and our PT-76s. Their helicopters, their Cobra gunships and the Hueys really, even though we took at least 21 down across the game, they were still there in overwhelming numbers. But hey, as I mentioned, that was the point of the game. Get as much on the table as you can and Okay, while we're on the subject of overwhelming American firepower, let's add to the mix the fact that um, the four American players each turn would roll for a flight of aircraft, Skyhawks, and uh, off-table artillery battery. Sometimes they would get nothing, other times they would get two flights of aircraft and two off-table artillery batteries. That was immense fun, and one of the reasons we didn't last as long as we hoped, although we did hang on for quite a lot longer than I think they expected us to. this last part I will briefly take you through what actually happened. As I previously mentioned I decided not to hold the villages because that would have been suicide and I fell back to what can be termed a small ridge I suppose. Um, there was a ridge in front, a wood either side and then woods to the right bisected by a road. You should see it on the map with my positions mark. One of the advantages for me was concealment. I didn't have to reveal my position until I opened fire or moved and they were in visual range. So on that hill, on the hills you see marked there, I placed anti-tank rifles and bunkers. In the wood to their left I placed a platoon of infantry with again a couple of anti-tank rifles and I reinforced these positions a couple of times. We held on and did a bit of damage, but that was always our intent really, was just to do damage. We were never going to hold them, and that's basically what happened. I must have lasted seven, eight, nine turns before I started to have, before I had to start to give ground, and I slowly fell back. But the overwhelming firepower, once they brought on everything they had, from armour to aircraft to their gunships, it was it's a case of bringing something out onto the table, getting one round of fire, hoping to do a reasonable amount of damage for what, what I could, and then keep my fingers crossed that they rolled bad, 
which in most cases they didn't. The only problem they had and the thing that held them up most was the the infantry positions. I don't know if you've ever played Flames of War, but dug in infantry gone to ground are very difficult to dislodge. They save on a three and nothing moves them out of the way. You have to roll really quite well to actually move them on. It was a slow process for them, but it was just attrition in the end. Once they started to take out some bases and once they started to pin units, it, there was very little I could do. As previously mentioned, I'd bring on um, some armour, take a few shots at them, hope to do some damage, and then with their overwhelming firepower, they would pretty much take out whatever I'd placed there, whatever I'd placed on the table. And eventually there was nothing really left other than platoons of infantry, which just, as I've mentioned a few times, just, just melted away and fell back. Some towards the town, others just off, really. They just didn't bring anything else on, there was no point. On our left flank, it pretty much went the same way. The Americans there launched a two-prong attack. The right-hand side of the right-hand bank of the river was their diversion to keep what forces we had there occupied. They didn't have a lot of armour on the on that bank of the river. What they did have, they had to bring in with Chinooks and, as I say, they, they didn't get a lot, I don't think. It was mainly helicopters, their gunships, again, that did a lot of damage, combined with um, aircraft attacks using napalm, which helped clear off the hill from our artillery. It ended up again, as I said, just a matter of attrition. Eventually, we just got pushed back and back to a position where we could no longer stop them from taking the bridge. They landed troops on the bridge, and that was that. The centre of their line seemed to go the slowest, although it had the, sh the shortest distance to travel. It was mainly, from what I could see and what I took part in, an infantry assault on the village, which was on the left-hand bank of the river. The very centre of their line was uh, an amphibious attack. That seemed to go the slowest. Their infantry were trying to attack our positions in the woods directly in front of them and didn't make a lot of headway. Their helicopters really did all the damage again to anything we'd placed there. They tried bringing arm around to help with their attack on the town, but nothing really made a, a serious attempt on that town. They were still a move away from actually entering the town when the bridge was finally taken. So that, to be honest, ended up being the diversionary attack, while the original diversionary attack ended up taking the objective. That is a bit harsh, I suppose, because they did have to take out our centre before they could make any real progress. Uh, so any armour that they had, that they initially brought on, was used to do that. They couldn't have just bypassed it because I was taking pot shots at them and it wouldn't have been very pleasant. So that was what preoccupied them in the first phase of the of the game, getting their armour on shore and taking out my positions in the woods to the right of the town. Once that was done, then they could start to concentrate on the assault on the, on the town itself, which, as I said, by the time that had happened... They had already captured the bridge with what was supposed to be the diversionary attack. If you're listening to this, then thank you for watching until the end. Please like and subscribe, and your comments would be great. It's always helpful to know the kind of things you're interested in. Thanks again.